All right, here we go. I'm gonna talk real fast and heavy for five minutes exactly. So uh, look at this, look at me, listen to my voice. Here we go. I recently faced a major career and life event when my team had to shelve The Moonlighters, a game I've been working on for over two years. And this got me thinking about how the games I play teach me life lessons. And more specifically, the connection between game mechanics and metaphors. Uh, metaphor is typically used in the storytelling sense, but our game mechanics are metaphors in their reflection of real-world systems and life events. The single most dominant metaphor in games is progress, right? Leveling up, unlocking content. Games teach us about hard work and the reward it produces, that skill developed through diligence will pay off. But in life, how we gain or lose things is less predictable. It's merciless, and oftentimes loss comes with no silver lining. But there are lessons we learn from loss, and steps we should prepare to take in the face of that sadness. Now you might say, Teddy, we love games because they give us simple, reliable, fair progress, right? It's an escape, and yeah, it totally is. Use the progress metaphor if you're making games, but consider trusting your player to deal with hard twists, even unfair ones. Maybe you'll teach her something or provide a catharsis of sorts. I want to walk you through four games that teach loss in various ways. Spoiler alert, I'm going to ruin moments in these games, uh, but I think you'll enjoy it. You can leave if you want, but don't, please. Um, it's on the last one. Number one, Chrono Cross. Yeah. Deep into the game, the villain forcibly swaps bodies with you, and you're stuck in his body, and you lose all your items, skills, teammates, and everybody hates you now. The game sets you up to ultimately regain that which you've lost. In terms of game mechanic, I classify this as a temporary loss of resources. You've lost most of your stuff, but the game challenges you to dust yourself off and reclaim it. Uh, RPGs love this technique, and it can be really powerful. Compared to real-life loss, it has direct connection to financial hardship or, say, a damaged friendship. You had something of value, and you might be able to get it back if you work really hard. And for like 100 hours. <laughs> um, variant 2. Uh, Roguelike genre games, like Spelunky and FTL, are based on permadeath, largely. When you get a game over, you lose everything and have to start the game over from scratch. And people enjoy doing that. Like, lots of people. <laughs> Mechanically, this is a permanent loss, permanent loss of resources. You lost something you can't get back. You can play again, but it's not going to be the same. It's gone forever. In life, these permanent lost moments are, are tragic, right? Losing a job, the death of a loved one, um, or less gravely, in my case, the failure of a project. Preparing your player in any way you can, some tiny level, for these sorts of losses is a real big gift that you can try to give them. Um, so yeah, uh, upbeat bonus reference. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 does this by taking Solid Snake away after like two hours of play. Your player character, who you loved in the first game, and is kind of the reason you bought the game, and now you have to play most of the game as a totally different guy who squabbles with his girlfriend all the time, but it's still fun to play and it's clever. Um, no notice that I'm drifting back and forth between narrative and game mechanics, and that's intentional. Both elements, the way the game plays, and the story that presents this, are important to establishing a gameplay metaphor. Variant 3, Earthbound. One of your characters takes this meditation test, which is presented using the normal combat interface in this RPG. Your enemy is this ancestor spirit, and he asks permission to rip out your legs, arms, ears, and eyes, and your mind. And as you actively agree to each loss, you lose HP, audio, and ultimately the visuals disappear before the game tells you you've passed the test. Um, to some players, it's kind of a gimmick, but it was powerful, and I classify that as a temporary loss of actions. Uh, a lot of good games do this now, and it's a really powerful technique to create meaning. Um, this technique connects strongly to real-life losses like physical or mental injury. The mechanisms you live your life with every day are taken from you, and your challenge is to adapt and push onward until you can hopefully regain your faculties. Final variant, in the Battlestar Galactica board game, some players are told halfway through this multi-hour game session that they are in fact not humans or good guys, but sleeper agent Cylon enemies, and now they're the bad guys. And mechanically, this is a permanent loss of your goal. You lose the reason you've taken every action up until now. It's gone, and it's replaced with the inverse. Changes like this in real life are, could be like having a child or getting married when your reason for doing or living might change fundamentally. It's a stretch, but there's a connection there, right? Um, 
I'm saying all this not to claim ownership of an already well-executed concept, but to encourage more, consens uh, more conscious exploration of this metaphor in the games you make, or if you don't make games, in the games you play. Uh, and check out Hyperlight Drifter, uh, which is the game I'm working on now that rescued me from my loss. Thank you. Woo!